Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. We are back with the Computer Science Discoveries Unit. We are in Lesson 18, and this time we're working on a project, and we will be making an interactive card. All right, so we're looking here at a map level. On this one, we're running the program a few times and answering the following questions. Which elements appear to use drawing commands? So drawing commands, we have a line here. We've got an ellipse, an ellipse, a line. And then the text, of course, uses drawing commands. Which elements appear to be sprites when we run it? This present is a sprite. And then the bicycle and the spastic dog are sprites. Um, for each sprite, which properties are being updated? Rotation. Uh, X and Y, random location, and then uh, rotation on a, with a random number block on this one. Where do you see conditionals being used? There's a conditional for this present. For this present. Uh, it's probably set to a variable counting up as the mouse moves. And once that variable value is increased to a certain number, then that present uh, visibility disappears and the bicycle and spastic dog visibility is true. Are there elements that you don't understand? No. All right, let's finish. Continue. That puts us on to bubble two. And on bubble two, there are a bunch of different projects to look at here. If you wanted to see uh, some examples of projects that you could work on, uh, for these interactive cards. But let's finish. Uh, I'm not going to go over that because I want to just jump directly into making my interactive card. So we're going to lay out the background. So I've already got some ideas for what I want to do. We already have some code here. They've already thrown in our draw loop because we will be using that for sure. So before beginning this project, you should have already completed the interactive card planning activity, and you'll want to have that paper with you as you develop your program. Preparation is one of the most important elements of successfully creating a program. Under do this, we're going to refer to that sheet. Uh, we're going to figure out what the lowest level or lowest layer of our animation is going to be. For me, I'm going to go with a soccer field. So soccer. Uh, let's go with this one here. I'm just going to call that field. Back to the code. So we're going to uh, go ahead and go to the sprite drawer and get this sprite created. Field. Control C. Control V. Set the animation to the field, run it. Oh, I didn't use draw sprites. There we go. There's my field. And then let's see. What else did it say in the instructions? You can use variable can you use variables or random numbers to add subtle animations to your background layer? Probably, yeah. All right, let's see. What sort of animations do we want to add to this? Mm, I'm going to grab some ellipses. Where are they? Here. And I'm going to put them in the draw loop because I want them to animate. I'm going to make them a lot smaller. So 20, 20, or maybe even like 10, 10 for the size, width, and height. Uh, for the first one's location, I'm going to put it 33,257. All right. And then I'm going to give it some math here. So from, let's say 30 to 38, and then random number here, 
from what did I say? 257 was that is that what's in that parameter? 257, yep. All right. So let's try 253 to 258. And then reset run. There it's wiggling around there. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my drawing drawer and let's grab fill. And notice whoop, grabbing fill, trying to anyway. Yellow. That shows up nicely. All right. So we've got a little ball going crazy there. I'm going to copy this. Control C, Control V, 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 V. One, two, three, four, five of these, but we're going to give them new locations. So 308, 240. So 300 to 308. And you can see those scrambling there because we haven't updated their locations. Um, let's do on Y, let's move it up to 321, three, or 102, not bad. All right, and then we're just gonna come up with some numbers here. So let's go with like, um, 180, 188, uh, 200, 208, um, let's see, 55 to 62, I'm just coming up with numbers. Uh, we'll put this guy at 350. And then let's see where all those are. All right. Let's put one down here. 288. Um, actually, let's put one up here. We don't have one here. So 41x. To 47x. And then 89 to 94. Now I want one more. At 355 to th uh, 355 to 360, and then 342, 350. All right, so now it looks like I've got these wiggling soccer balls around my soccer field for whatever reason, you know. Okay. I'm happy with that. Is there anything else I need to accomplish here? Can you use variables or random numbers? Yes, we just did that. So let's finish and continue. On bubble four, now that you have the more static elements of your card laid out, it's time to add the sprites. We've added one sprite. That was our background for the soccer field. Your sprite should provide the primary animations and interactions for your card, so feel free to get creative here and have fun. Check out the sprites table in your project guide. For each sprite in your table, we need to initialize it at the top of the program with a create sprite block. Find or create images for the sprite in the animation tab and then set them with set animation. And then inside the draw loop, update any sprite properties that we will be constantly animating and we'll deal with conditionals in a minute. Okay. All right, so let's get some more sprites in here. I need an athlete, right? I need a soccer player. 
Um, I do need a soccer ball. Let's use this one. Actually, let's use this one. Just call that ball. And then um, I'm going to go, let's see if we can find, is there just a people category? Yes. Let's find some people. I need a soccer player. And I have an idea for this program, I promise you. Let's see. Is there anyone hanging out just wearing shorts? Hmm. Let's see if we can find a soccer player. Cartoon soccer player. All right, images. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, I also want to go ahead and see if I can find one that's transparent to use. I need somebody who's not doing any big actions I need or and without a soccer ball with them. Just kind of facing me. So let's see. Cartoon soccer player. Let's any color. <laughs> we have Ronaldo there. Let's see. Come on. We got to find somebody quickly here. Somebody that's just facing forward, and it kind of looks like they could potentially be using a soccer pump or a ball pump. This guy's just up here T-posing, apparently. All right. We'll just go with something that makes sense. Let's use Ronaldo here. All right, we're going to save image as Ronaldo cartoon. I'm going to save this to my pictures folder, save it. And then I need to go to remove.bg to get the background taken off of there, upload an image. It's going to be my Ronaldo, whatever you are. All right, background removed. Let's download that. Now it's called Remove BG Ronaldo Cartoon. All right, back over here. Let's add the animation, upload image. Where's our new one? Probably in downloads, right? There he is, open. Too big. So now we need to go to uh, image compressor. Go to the Optimizilla. Upload file. Ronaldo BG, open. All right, so let's download that. Now it's all of that plus min is the name. Add, upload, this one, open. There we go. Now there's Ronaldo. Let's crop him. There we go. And then we need a coach. Cartoon soccer coach. Sure. Oh, uh, no, he's got a watermark. Not going to use that one. Let's see. This will work. Not really in the same style as the Ronaldo. I wish these... This one's fantastic.
All right, let's save image as. All right, coach. Save that to pictures, save it. All right, and then remove.bg is still here, so let's add a new one, upload an image, pictures, coach, open. Now hopefully this one is small enough that I don't need to compress the image file. Upload. Downloads. Coach. Open. Sweet. Let's crop you as well. Okay, and then I need a soccer pump. Or ball pump. Images. Let's find a cartoon one, sticking with our theme just a little bit, or trying to. Let's grab this one. Nope, iStock photo. This one could work. Nope. This guy. Maybe we can remove the background bit from that one. Here. Let's grab this one. No licensing issues. Save image as. Pump. Uh, make sure I'm saving it to my pictures folder, save, and then remove BG, upload image, pictures, pump, open. There we go. Let's download that, and let's see if we can get that uploaded. Downloads, air pump. Open. There we go. All right, we'll crop that. And then Aldo, just fixing these names, Coach. Oh. Up. All right, everything is simple now. All right. Let's add stuff. Okay. Well, now let's get into the meat of this. So sprites, the field is going to be the thing in the background. Let's get our coach in here. Put him over on the left-hand side. Uh, let's say 47232. And set his animation to the coach. Run it. He's that big. And we're going to have to get rid of some of these squiggly squigglies and scale 0 0.5. There we go. Actually, let's move him to right here. Um, 80, 172. There you go. Um, let's get our pump on here. And the pump is going to be in relation to the soccer player, which is Ronaldo in our case. Ronaldo, pump. All right, reset, run. All right, both are giganto. So pump dot scale zero point three, and Ronaldo scale point three as well. Make the pump a lot smaller. All right, let's remove Ronaldo to here. 
302-180. Move him down just a bit. Two ten. All right. Uh, actually, I want to flip the pump. Flipped code, run successfully flipped, and we're going to put that pump. Actually, layer that over Ronaldo. We're going to put that pump right in front of him here. So I'm going to give it the same three hundred two two ten. See how that looks. All right, let's move that down and over. So let's try 278, 254. Let's go one more over. Let's try right here, 239, 261. I'm trying to make it look like he's holding the pump in his hand. Close, down just a little bit further. Let's try 270. Good. All right. And then we're gonna put a soccer ball right there. So sprites. Uh, we're gonna put the soccer ball way in front of the coach, well, potentially in front of everybody. Why not? Ball. Set animation for the ball to the ball. Reset run. It's giganto. We're going to start that out pretty small. So sprite.scale. All dot scale gets zero point one. Let's make it even smaller, zero point zero three maybe. Yep, really small, and we're gonna put it right two ten two fifty nine. So run. All right. Okay, so we've got our scene created. Now, uh, let's actually make that 0 0.06 maybe. There we go. That works. What else do I want to do? Go to back to the animation tab, and I'm going to duplicate Ronaldo. Uh, call him uh oh. Oh no, Ronaldo. And we're going to just draw. Uh, Like a big, oh no. <laughs> I know it looks bad right now. Paint bucket. Oh, oh, that's not going to work. So we still need to just use the drawing. So now he's just going to make like a, oh no, face. All right, sure. <laughs> that looks terrible, right? Um, and then the coach, we're going to duplicate him, and he's going to make an even more upset look. Like, rawr. 
kind of face. Let's make sure we connect that. And let's give him some menacing looking eyebrows here. Now he's really upset, right? All right, upset coach complete. And then Oh, his hair's kind of brown, but we won't worry about that. You get the idea. And then, let's see. So the instructions inside the draw loop, update any sprite properties that will be constantly animating. We'll deal with conditionals in a minute. Uh, right now, let's have... Ronaldo's... I'm going to get rid of this one right here. Which one is that? It's the one that's right smack in the middle of this guy. There we go. Out of my way. And I'm going to have Ronaldo. Kind of rotate a little bit. Ronaldo dot rotation gets math random number uh, minus ten to ten to run. So he's like scared that the coach is going to be disappointed in him. Um, all right, let's finish there and continue. Let's reduce this to minus three, three. Okay. You've got a background, you've got sprites. Now it's time to give your user something to do. On the interactions table from your project guide, find all the interactions. Uh, for those interactions, we need to find we need to add if blocks. And add those inside our draw loop. Add the appropriate input block for your condition, so just key down or mouse down. Add the necessary actions inside the if block. All right, so here's where it gets interesting. I'm actually going to zoom out a bit so I can see what I'm doing a little better because we're about to add a bunch of code. All right. Conditionals, let's go. So if, I'm gonna put all my conditionals down at the bottom of my draw loop actually. Uh, let's see, if world mouse pressed over Ronaldo, Rondaldo, Ronaldo, I'll do. Then sprite dot scale ball dot scale gets ball dot scale plus zero point one. Enter. See if that works. Run. Reset. Um, hmm. Let's do, we're going to do, um, if mouse. Down. Left button, let's see, run. 
Hmm. Let's see. Let's try a key then. Key down. Key went down. Space. Okay, that works better. And I want to slow that down. Zero, zero, one. Maybe actually, mouse pressed over. Oh, Ronaldo. I'm just experimenting. There we go. Now we're slowly increasing. Okay, I like that better. Let's change that to a 2, however, because that was really slow. That works. Okay. If mouse pressed over Ronaldo, then the ball scale gets... Okay. And then control. We might need an if then else here. If ball dot scale is greater than let's say one point eight to get started, just to try it, then um Set animation of coach to upset coach and Ronaldo to oh no Ronaldo. All right, let's see. Run when it gets to one point eight. Let's reduce that number a bunch. Uh, let's try 0 0.5. Just to test it. All right, there we go. We need the coach to look even angrier, I think. Angry coach. Fill that in. All right. I don't, maybe we don't need that. And then we're going to find another animation. Pop. Uh, let's find up or let's see cartoon uh, explosion. That will work. This will work. And we're going to remove the background of this, save image as. I'm going to call this pop. Pictures, save. All right, let's very quickly go through this. Remove BG. Upload. Uh, pictures. Where's my pop? There it is. Open. All right. Download it. Back over here to the project, upload, downloads, pop, open. There's pop. We're going to crop it. Pop, code. All right. And we're going to change the ball sprite.
pop. Run, let's test it. Perfect. All right, reset. More sophisticated by nesting them or using compound booleans. We didn't nest anything. Let's finish and let's get to bubble six. And on bubble six, the surprise in your card comes from conditionals that don't directly respond to user input, but to some other element of your card. This could be triggered by a variable that gets updated as the user interacts with your card or a sprite moving into a certain part of the screen. For each of the remaining items on your interactions table from your project guide, an if block or if else block if you need a fallback action inside the draw loop, add the appropriate Boolean comparison, add the necessary actions inside the if block, challenge can you create more sophisticated conditionals by nesting them or using compound Booleans? You know, I think we kind of already did that with uh, if ball dot scale gets uh, a size over or is greater than 0 0.5. Suppose we could add to that. We're clicking on Ronaldo. The ball gets so big that it pops. Let's see. And then they change. And then let's make the coach also rotate here. We'll copy that. And we're going to make him shake kind of violently. Zero or negative 20 to 20. And we'll make Ronaldo like uh, try to run away. So Sprite. Dot X. Ronaldo. Dot X gets Ronaldo. Dot X minus uh, four. Enter. And we're going to make him run this at this diagonal. So we also need to subtract from y. So Ronaldo.y gets Ronaldo.y minus 3. Enter. So now let's run it. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's have him go more up. Uh, seven Y. So reset run. Make that ball increase in size. There it goes. All right. I love that. Um, all right. Finish and continue. Now's your chance to put some finishing touches on your card. We've included some new blocks that you haven't seen before, so take time to look around and try out some new blocks. Check all the requirements in your project guide. Make sure you've included everything you need. Consider adding any of the following to finish up your card. Text. So I do need text. Um, I do need text. So they're interacting by, you know, holding the mouse cursor down while over Ronaldo. And then the ball pops, coach gets mad, Ronaldo runs off. So we are going to add some text here and I need it to appear above the draw sprites. So uh, to the drawing drawer and let's grab text. Let's go ahead and make it yellow text we're going to go ahead and give it a size text size text size of like uh, 25 so it's easy to read easy to see and then the actual text itself 
pull down the uh, left mouse button over Ronaldo. All right. Put this at five. Fifteen might work. Uh, let's read. I think that this was how we did the text box, right? Two hundred. Two hundred. Uh, let's move that over here. Actually, let's put that at the very bottom. Um, 2276. So 5, 270, reset run. There we go. Hold down the left mouse button over Ronaldo. There's our instructions. Okay, uh, and then I want some text to say pump that ball, pump the ball up, maybe. over the coach, or maybe not. I'll have the coach say, like, dang it, Ronaldo, or something like that. Let's see. And we'll make that text red. So I'm actually going to grab all of this. Control C. Let's move that cursor down. And inside this if statement, it's red. Say gall, burn it. Ronaldo. Uh, we're going to put that at thirty twenty five. Let's see what that looks like. We got to run the program to see. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Uh, let's finish right there. And then once you get to the end, you finished yours, go ahead and fill this out, answering all of those questions for the survey. And that's it from me. I'm going to go back to my project and run that one more time just for my own uh, just for my own entertainment. So hold down the left button button over the Ronaldo. We get it, we get it. We're pumping that ball up. And there we go. <laughs> awesome. Super happy with that. Run it again just for just for fun. Amazing. Okay. All right. I'm super happy with that. And uh, I hope you have as much fun making your interactive card as I did making mine. I'm super proud of what I made. I hope you're proud of what you make with your project. That's it for me. I'll see you next time for Lesson 19.